Hello boys and girls and welcome to my preview of Manchester City against Arsenal. This is our game in hand and it just so happens to be this tough. Why couldn't it be a lot easier for our game in hand? The one chance we've got to really climb and get in amongst things is Manchester City away. We haven't even got the comfort of being at home. It's at the Etihad. Now of course this game should have been a week ago. But Manchester City were busy uh, winning the Carabao Cup final. So we had that rest. I thought that this game would, you know, maybe not be played for about another month or so yet. But out of nowhere, last week, um, TV and the Premier League have just turned around and said, right, we're going to pull it in there. Week's notice, job done. Um, and to be fair to Arsenal, we sold 3,000 seats in less than a week. Um, so it's going to be a sellout, three tiers at Manchester City as well now and um, yeah we've got to make the most of it while we can because as I've been saying in other videos this coronavirus and everything else I feel that it will be affecting the Premier League very very soon and we may well be playing games behind closed doors so we've got to try and enjoy it whilst we can um, it's a slightly earlier than normal kickoff 7 30 p.m. I don't know whether that's something to do with Champions League games and we can't kick off at the same times and whatnot. Um, but it means we've got to leave a little bit earlier. Now Manchester is never the easiest of places to get to and traffic's always horrendous and um, it is what it is. And we've got to go out there, we've got to try and perform and we've got to give a good account of ourselves. If we can do that, even if we lost, I would still be proud of the team. What I don't want to see is us roll over and get absolutely humiliated like we always do or have done in the past against teams like Manchester City. Now, of course, this is a big game for Mikel Arteta. It's the first time he is returning to Manchester City since he's left there. He has a lot of fond memories. He has a lot of friends still there. And he will want to put one over Pep Guardiola. And on the flip side, Pep Guardiola will not want to get beaten by his understudy. It's as simple as that, you know. All the things that Mikel would have learned from Pep, Pep won't want him to come there and to show him up. And on top of that as well, Manchester City's last game, they of course lost at the weekend, the Manchester Derby, 2-0, and they were not good. And, you know, myself included, looks at that and thinks, well, they won't be as poor as that this time. They must be saving their self for us. You look at Edison in goal, for example, and the mistakes he made. Both goals were his fault. He'll end up having an absolute worldie against us, and you won't see them kind of mistakes. And uh, team lineup is going to be crucial. I'm going to tinker with it a little bit and what I would like to see, including the formation. But do you know what? Mikel Arteta, he will know what's best for this game. I'm hoping so anyway. He will know every inch of that Manchester City team. He will know every player's strengths, every player's weaknesses. He will know how we should be able to beat them. Whether we can do that is a different matter because we haven't you know, got some of the quality that Manchester City have. One player in particular for Manchester City that worries me is Kevin De Bruyne. Now, he didn't play in the Manchester derby because he was injured. Pep Guardiola in his press conference, maybe it's a bit of kidology and mind games has said that he is back in training, but he doubts he will be ready for this game. But I don't actually believe a word he says because lo and behold, we'll probably get up to Manchester and we'll see the team sheet and Kevin De Bruyne will be starting. Now, I feel that he makes Manchester City tick despite all the other qualities that they have within their squad. He is the main man for me. And you could see how much they missed him against Manchester United. Now, another thing about this game as well is that if we do beat Manchester City, that then means Liverpool only need one more game to win the Premier League. And who are Liverpool playing this weekend? Everton. Is it written? Can it possibly be done? Um, Liverpool will certainly want to get it done as quick as they can with all the talk of the coronavirus and not being able to play games and celebrate in winning the league in front of their fans and everything else. But if we go and win this game, 
my concern is what it's going to do for us. Not only boost us for the rest of the season and everything else, and make everyone else around us stand up and go, wow, do you know what? They mean business. Um, you know, I don't really care about the flip side of that with the Manchester City and Liverpool and everything. It's about us. Let's get our job done. Um, you're looking at the league table, and I'll tell you something, and it's, I was laughing about this the other day, and if you don't laugh, you'll cry. But Manchester City have actually lost more league games than Arsenal this season. How on earth have they lost more games than us? They sit in second place comfortably. 25 points behind Liverpool, we know that. But they're comfortable in second. But they've lost seven games this season. Arsenal only lost six. But this is where the big difference is. Manchester City have only drawn three games. Arsenal have drawn 13. Wow. I can't actually believe that when you think about it. 13 games. And there's still 10 left. Some of them draws could come back to haunt us big time. But it is what it is. Let's go out there. Let's enjoy it. Let's try and play. Let's try and get the victory. I'd be happy with a draw. Hopefully Mikel Arteta can come up with some kind of master plan. Hopefully... You know, like I said, he knows the ins and outs of Manchester City better than anyone. And he can come up with something that gets us the three points. But team selection is crucial. And um, this is exactly what I'm going to go with. Now, the formation, I'm going to change. And I'm going to go for a 3-4-3 formation. And it's similar to what Manchester United did um, in the Manchester derby with three at the back. And I feel that with the personnel we've got and people like David Luiz, a three at the back could probably work for this game. Um, because predominantly David Luiz is actually really good in a free. Um, so I'm going to go into this and as usual at the end you can let me know what you think. Starting off in goal, Bern Leno. Some question marks over this guy um, after the Olympiakos game but as I said to everyone do not question this man. The amount of times he saved us and last time out against West Ham he did it again. Simple as that and he needs to be on that kind of form if we're going to stand a chance in this game. Burn Leno. Um, now the three at the back. First of all, I'm going to go with Mustafi. Seen him in training. Looks like he's fit and ready. And um, I never thought I'd see the day that we'd be missing him. Never ever thought I'd see the day that I would say that. First one, Mustafi. Now alongside him, I'm going to go with David Luiz. Like I said, I feel that he plays really well in a back three. Done that job brilliantly when Chelsea won the league. And... Um, he looks more comfortable in that kind of role and he's got a little bit more freedom and his passing range does come into play. So that's what I'm going to go with. Now, alongside those two, I'm going to go with Pablo Mari. Impressed with him in the last couple of games since he's made his debut. And this is the big test though. When the kind of players and strikers that Manchester City have got and you've got players like Jesus and Aguero and then you've got all the midfield runners and everything else. So it's going to be a tough evening if he plays. But I would like to see how he handles this situation. Now with that four. This is where things do get a little interesting. Now we're going to have the wing backs. First and foremost. On the right hand side Hector Bellerin. And what I will say about this is. There's been a lot of debate over Hector, Maitland-Niles, Socrates. Well it's very obvious that Maitland-Niles is probably not going to play. Because there's been a lot of talk and a lot of rumours speaking about why he's not been included. And I just can't see how all of a sudden he would be thrown into the side. Unless something's drastically happened in the last few days since West Ham and everything else. He's just not really being used. And we're hearing reports that he's turned up late to training. And, you know, he doesn't want to play in the right back position. And Mikel Arteta is saying, right, see ya, bye bye, out of the squad you go. Um, so if you've got the choice between Socrates and Bellerin, it's going to have to be Hector Bellerin and it's as simple as that. Now on the left hand side, I'm going to go with Saka and um, I would hope to see him more of attacking threat than anything else. But he's going to have to seriously be on his game um, to deal with what Manchester City do. Um, Leroy Sane is back in training, but I don't think he's going to be starting this game. Um, the likes of Phil Foden as well um, could be a problem out there. And maybe they might switch things around and put Raheem Sterling on that side. So he's going to have to be on his game if he's playing, that's for sure. And I would like to see Saka there. Now, in the midfield too, first of all, Granit Xhaka. And um, 
yeah, he's going to have to really be switched on. None of these sloppy, silly crossfield passes that he's been doing in the last couple of games. I want to see the Granite Shaka when Mikel Arteta first took over. That's what I want to see because if he does that, his passing range can get us out of trouble. But at the same time, if he puts some of them dodgy passes in, it can put us in trouble. So he's got to have a big game. Um, alongside him, Danny Sabaya, standout player against West Ham in terms of the outfield. And he's going to need a big game as well. This is a big chance for him to show what he can do against one of the big sides. And um, with a midfield as good as Manchester City's is, he's going to have to really be on his game to stand out. But I would like to see Danny Sabayas in there. Now, in those attacking areas, this is where we get things a little interesting. Now, first of all, on the left-hand side of that, I will go with Gabriel Martinelli. I want us to attack Manchester City with pace. I want us to really, really go for it because one of their weaknesses when we watched the Manchester United game was their fullbacks and the way that they were exploited down those sides. So we need pace and I would go with Gabriel Martinelli. Now on the right of the three, I will go with Nicolas Pepe. Same principle, pace, trickery. And he can really have a go at Manchester City on that left-hand side, dependent on who they play. I've got no doubt that Nicolas Pepe can take anyone on, but he's got to go out there and prove it. And it's as simple as that. Now, in the middle of that three, as the main striker, I will have Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang again, pace. That's what I want to see from that front three. Some interchanging, some hard work and pace, directness. Run at Manchester City, go for it. See what happens. You saw Manchester United do it. So why can't we do it? It's as simple as that. So there we go. That is it. That is my predicted lineup. That is um, what I would go with. It's a bit of a, a different one. The players have got the capabilities to do it. That's for sure. Um, but whether Mikel Arteta will go for that, I'm not too sure. I think he may well keep with a 4-2-3-1 formation. Um, so anyway, as usual, let me know in the comment section what you think. Do you agree or disagree? Um, if you do disagree, what would you go with? What would your starting 11 be, formation, etc, etc? Um, I will be up in Manchester and um, what will be, will be. Um, my heart tells me one thing, my head tells me another. But you know what? You've got to go there with some hope. And if we can go there as fans with a bit of hope and push the team on and show a bit of belief, then maybe they can show a bit of belief on the pitch and bring it home as well. We'll wait and see. So if you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you smash a like on this video. Um, there will be a player ratings after the game. So until then, I will see you lot soon. I'm out of here.